So a little bit about democracy in the classroom. Um, so some of the democratic habits that I've either researched on my own or experienced for myself are as follows. Uh, democratic classrooms uh, promote self-governance. So are we giving students spaces to kind of voice what they believe their classroom environment should look like and feel like? I believe it's very important um, to see how those values come up when you ask a student, what should our classroom rules be? How should we participate in peaceful um, uh, discussion and dialogue? And how can we respect multiple perspectives? Um, we should also encourage questioning and critical thought. Uh, to me, this is the most important bullet point on uh, the, the PowerPoint because uh, a lot of times, at least in American schools, we aren't encouraged to push back against the system. We aren't encouraged to uh, sort of reflect and think about ways we can make our learning better, more meaningful, uh, whether it's in regard to how the government works or uh, anything in regard to police brutality or uh, violence in our communities. We don't have those spaces to really unpack what that means. And being unafraid uh, to ask students the hard questions shows that we trust them in the, in, in the uh, opinions that they have. So counter narratives, it's a method of storytelling um, that sort of challenges the dominant narratives in our society. So counter narratives are very important. My whole life in school has been a counter narrative in a lot of ways um, in that uh, being a, a minority population at predominantly white institutions, my experiences might not look like that of the dominant sort of uh, perspective that's put forth. And being able to have a space, specifically for me in college, having that poetry group to really address uh, how I felt and pay homage to how I felt and not neglect those feelings that I, I felt on a daily basis, whether it be uh, a professor who told me I didn't belong in college or having been physically removed from a classroom space while I was in college. Really having a place to unpack what all of these things meant to me while I was an undergrad was really important. And so I believe counter narratives definitely have a space in our school. The four main functions of counter narratives are as follows. They build community. So just like we're doing right now, I saw a number of hands go up when I said, asked have, have people been to a spoken word performance? And so that in of itself is a way to sort of build community. As you're consuming these counter narratives, you're um, consuming mine, I'm consuming yours, and it's a good space for us to exchange ideas. We can also challenge perceived stereotypes. So um, I've confronted stereotypes, obviously, in my academic experience. Um, you know, a lot of times people see me and they see a tall, black man. Um, and in the academic spaces I've been in, I've been mistaken for a basketball player several times. I was even mistaken for a basketball player yesterday here at the World Forum. So I'm not, I cannot separate the fact that I am six foot six inches tall and, you know, I'm pretty good, but my sole purpose in life is not, has not been to sort of, um, a, to play basketball. I've been put on earth for a purpose that I believe in um, and you know, to uh, sort of um, buy into that stereotype is me sort of turning my back on the narrative that I've already began to construct on my own. Counter narratives also create a space for hope to happen in school. I believe hope um, and democracy go hand in hand. Uh, to know that there's a space for your voice to exist and live on is extremely important um, and I see classrooms as a space for uh, hope to sort of emerge. Um, and by combining those elements um, from your story and your current reality, you're, um, you're able to sort of uh, create um, a new reality that you can define for yourself, which I believe is extremely powerful. And the last quote on here is extremely important, talking about uh, marginalized voices in different societies or American, in an American context, but it applies uh, globally, I believe, that oppressed groups uh, use stories as a mechanism for survival. So as we enter uncharted territories as, the, as a human race, uh, as we enter uncharted spaces, um, it's important that we use our stories as this sort of protective element when we're um, you know, engaging in opportunities or moments where we're one of a few.